Hello and welcome to another video in our Mastering Clicks and series. In this section, we are going to be talking about synthetic keys and we will discuss about common issues related to them and also about what possible solutions we can use in order to fix synthetic keys. We are going to also uh, start off in this section loading tables that are going to eventually form our data model. So our first part here is loading dimension tables and in the process, we also try to understand and what are the rules involved in loading data into ClickSense data models. So let's go into uh, ClickSense and as you can see here, uh, there is an auto-generated section in my data load editor which you can use to be able to load your data. You just need to click on that unlock button to unlock and start using this section. I usually prefer to have a section of my own so I use the plus button here to add a new one and I'm going to call this dimensions because we are loading some of our dimension tables right now. All I need to do now is add a connector which will help me load data into ClickSense. So I'm going to go to the right hand side, click on create new connection and I'm creating a simple connection to a folder right now. Later we will also take a look at how to load data from a database. So all files and I'm changing the path here because all my data is in the D drive. So I'm going to put in D colon slash enter and that's my folder, my dimensions folder and I'm going to create a connection to this dimensions folder and I'm going to call it as a dimension tables. Okay, once this is done, all I need to do now is click on create. The name for my connector is just a label it's just text so you can give any name you would like to have for your connectors sometimes it could be to a folder that contains specific tables or could be to a data source so the name could be all flat files or the name could be a database depending on what type of data source you are connecting to or you could just give it a name that helps you understand what type of data is coming from this particular data source. Now, in order to load the data, I just go click on select data and I'm going to choose my first table, which is invoices, click on select and it picks up all the columns in the table and inserts the script. So all I need to do is click on insert script and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can take a look here. This is nothing special. It's a very basic load script where it is loading all these columns, which it has picked up from my library connector dimension tables, which has a file called as invoices and it's an Excel file. The labels are embedded. So the column names are being picked up from my Excel table. And the name of the sheet is the table name. So invoice generated is the name of the table, which is also the name of the sheet in my Excel file. Now, what you can do is perhaps if you don't like that really long name that it's um, generated there, invoices generated, you could use a name that you prefer to have, for example, invoices, and that's the syntax for the table name again, the table name followed by a colon. Once you're ready to load your table, all you need to do is go to the right hand side, click on load data. This is just one table. So obviously there are no issues with this. I just close and now I load my second table. For my second table, I'm going to add another section because I will be using this later for some other examples. And I'm going to call this as employees, employees, and I'm going to load data. Now again, I just want to zoom in here a little bit so that you can take a look. If you're somebody who likes to have comments, you could go click on the double slash button there to comment on comment text. And you know, for example, some of us like to tag or identify certain sections of our code to be able to say something simple like loading employees data. So that's just a basic comment for this particular load statement. And then again, I go to the right hand side, click on select data. And this time employee details is my table. Now because I'm zoomed in, obviously I can't see the whole screen. So I'm just going to zoom out so that we can take a look and clicking on select data again, selecting employee details and clicking on select. Nothing much to do. This is just another Excel file. Just click on insert script and you are ready to go. Now there's one thing here again that I want to change because I usually don't like my column names having spaces on them and that's exactly what's available here. So I'm just going to rename these very quickly. I'm going to call it last name 
for last name instead of two words as one single column name and renaming first name as well as uh, first name okay and of course if you would like to have a name of a table you can add that in as well so employees would be my table name once you're done with this that's again all that i need to do with this table and i'm going to go click on load data all right so that looks good to go it's always a good idea to take a look at the data model every time you load the data so let's go take a look at data model from here you can click on this button to open it up on a new tab and then uh, once you've done that i'm just going to wait for the data model to load up uh, you can take a look if the data is connected the way you expected it to be as you can see here i can see my two tables that i just loaded but i also see that they are not linked with each other so what are the rules now required for my data model to be created in uh, clicksense so the first rule that you need to remember is that between any two tables there can be only one key column and the second rule is that the name of these two key columns should be exactly the same so between invoices and uh, employees i have employee id as my key column and in employees you see the key column is named as emp id instead of employee id or in invoices it's known as employee id instead of emp id so the names the column names are not the same which is why they do not link all i need to do now is go back to my script and decide to rename one of these two columns and in this case i'm going to rename the invoices because it's a shorter name for my column emp id just remember that it has to be exactly the same there has to be exactly same uppercase and lowercase so that you don't have a mismatch again and then you load the data and now you should be able to see once i'm done with this close and back to the data model you can see that the two tables are now linked i always like to do that uh, having the script editor open and the data model open on the second tab so that every time i load data i can then make a quick comparison now for the last table that we are loading i'm just going to put in the name of the table first this is my customers info table oops i made a mistake there just let me fix that and i'm going to go back to select my data customers table is a csv file so i just select it and it's the same as excel there is no difference here except for the fact that it has a delimiter identified as the comma and then i click on insert script so now you can see it's again a load statement you have the same path the name of the file and the extension csv the delimiter is identified as a comma so once you're done with this all you need to do now is load your data when i load my data now you can see that i have some synthetic keys you can see there is one synthetic key generated and if i go take a look at my data model you can see that there is a synthetic table here and some synthetic keys generated in customer info and in employees so i'm going to stop here and we are going to now move on and talk about what's happened here exactly um, synthetic keys are one of the most common uh, problems that we face when we are loading data because not all data is perfect we need to always make changes to make sure that it fits in into click sense in the right way so let's move on to the next video and let's then talk about the impact of synthetic keys on our data model why exactly do they happen and of course later talk about solutions to synthetic keys and how to implement that in the current situation that we have so i hope you continue to the next one where we will talk more about synthetic keys thank you